Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we're bringing in Amada Weiss. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me here, Jason. Uh, it's awesome to be, you know, on the Learn with Jason show. <laughs> I learned a lot from this show, so. <laughs> yeah, Which yeah. No, I appreciate you taking the time. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. So um, so for folks who aren't familiar with you and your work, do you want to give us a little bit of a background? Yeah, sure. So I am Ahmed Aves, uh, as you already know, uh, and I've spent a major part of my career writing open source code. Most of it is small packages, especially with Node.js, uh, you know, writing small CLI scripts, automating stuff. Mm -hmm. I really am into, you know, improving productivity. And I even have a course out, uh, VS Code Power User and a Node CLI course, because I love to teach as well. And beyond that, uh, I'm the head of DevRel, developer relations at Rapid API. Uh, I have, I'm also uh, humbled to be part of the Google Developers Expert Network, GitHub Stars Program, Digital Ocean Navigators, and I think I've been around the block. <laughs> I've been writing <laughs> content for like 19 years. So, uh, web purist, come from a family of teachers. Both grandparents and parents are teachers, and I love the purple color. Oh, nice, you nice. Want? <laughs> very cool, very cool. Well, I'm uh, I'm excited to talk to you today because I uh, I like. I like CLIs, I like Node, I like automation. So these are all things that I'm into. And I'm I'm interested to just kind of dig into this and and what we're talking about here is actually a topic that is is pretty near and dear to my heart, which I've balled up. I've heard it described as meta programming. So this is a, a lot of what I what I end up describing it as is is this concept of meta programming. So there's code that you write to ship a feature that there's code that you write to to make your your customers have a new experience and then there's code that you write that makes it easier to write code right so so when you get into this idea of you're you're basically building things out that make your experience as a developer easier um that's that's what i'm referencing when i'm talking about meta programming so uh, for you what drew you to this? Um, it sounds like this is something that you do uh, for a, a fair amount of. So what drew you to this as a, as a developer? Well, th that is an interesting thought. Like, like, for example, to me, when I was growing up, there was not a lot of community around, you know, community of developers. There were no, you know, conferences happening or stuff like that. So, you know, they, even, even to today, you know, uh, People who are non-technical, they think of programmers as sort of hackers. And, you know, that, that sound of, you know, typing on the keyboard and saying, I'm in, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, in. like, yeah, like that, that, like, I, I still do that when, you know, Gmail loads. So, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but I think uh, growing up when I was like, I was a kid, I started writing code when uh, I looked up, uh, you know, my, an elder cousin who was into coding. She was uh, doing uh, her degree in electrical engineering. And it, it it just stuck with me that, you know, the really, really senior, you know, programmers who are really awesome with their jobs, they can work in the terminal. And mm. they, I didn't know, you know, the command line stuff and whatnot. And it, it beats me to say that. Even today, if we represent the command line with that dollar sign, and I'm mm. like, if there's anything I'm against, it's that dollar sign because it kept me away from everything command line for years in my career. I would always run that and it would say, you know, dollar not found. And I was like, I would just get scared that uh -huh. I don't know what that thing is. And I would just move away. Okay, I'm, I'm never going to look into that. And, you know, let, 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 let's not go there. So, and it was, I think it was... Uh, 2004 or 2005, like I, I was watching a video from Chris Corey, a big fan of the guy. <laughs> and he said, you know, you could just drag and drop a folder inside of your terminal and just CD into it. And I was like, this is super easy, right? Like I could never figure out, like, I know that this folder is on my desktop, but I could never for the life of me figure out what is that, you know, USR mm. folder that many people call, you know, user resource, uh, user. Mm -hmm. It's like user uh, system resources or something. But like, I could never figure out that path on my own when I was, a, you know, I was a kid, right? And just by that thing, you know, like you could just drag and drop and CD into a folder. I, I felt like half of the struggle was already done for me. I, I in 
I found out that, okay, that dollar sign actually doesn't mean anything, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. just for context. And then, uh, you know, uh, history got the better of me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I ended up becoming an electrical engineer and I okay. would uh, write firmware level code, you know, actually write the manually those zeros and ones, those, uh, you know, byte code and everything. Oh, so, okay. so, so I was, yeah, like I was, I was kind of already used to the no UI kind of thing. I mm. wanted to be a designer, <laughs> front end developer or something. And then it just hit me when I was at my sister's wedding that there are so many photos and I want them to be renamed in a particular way. And I can just see that in my head right now that here's a loop that I need to write. And this is what it will happen. Uh, It will do one when I run it. I I just don't know how I can do that with uh, command line. What is it called? Mm. Uh, Hash bang. I, I just don't know that, but I'm a programmer. I can figure that stuff out. So it took me a lot of while to figure that thing out. But once I did, I was like, this is easy. Like, why, why, why don't we talk about this more? Like, why why are not m- more people creating more automations? Yeah, you, you know, like for you, me. You, you bring up, I think, an interesting point, which is that, you know, er- everything seems easy after you figure it out. Right? <laughs> and I think that that's the, <laughs> the, the joy of programming for me is yeah. that so many of these things, when I first look at them, are so intimidating. The the I, I'm looking at a at somebody doing something. I, I remember when I first got into real time programming. I I was at a, a conference. It was run by And Yet. It was called like Keeping It Real Time or something like that. And I remember seeing um, I I can't remember his his real name, but he goes by Substack. He got up on stage and he did this like live coding session that was unbelievably fast you know he's he's got vim open and he's he's doing things it was so much it looked like a cut scene that uh they would put into a show about hackers that would then get posted on like the subreddit it's a unique system and they'd be like look they copy pasted the jquery source code it, it looked that fake he was going so fast he was just like bam, 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 bam. and he built this whole real-time api and i was like i walked away going wow okay i guess i'm not a very good programmer i could never do something like that um and and i sat with that for a while and realized no, that's not fair. He's practiced this. He knows this stuff. I've never looked at it before. So the fact that it seems like magic to me just means that I haven't looked behind the curtain yet. It doesn't mean that it's not accessible to me. And that, you know, that kind of drives a lot of what we do on the show is we're trying to pull back that curtain a little bit because anybody can do any of this stuff. And once you figured it out, it'll feel easy. So you just got to get behind the curtain. You got to see what's actually happening. You know, you learn what does the jargon mean? What does that dollar sign mean? What does the, you know, if, I, if I'm looking at a folder on my desktop, where does that live in the actual guts of the machine if I want to find it in the CLI? Once those little pieces start to come together, all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, I can do this. Like, I do get this. This isn't, this isn't magic. This is just computers. And then you can get further and further. And I love that. That's such a great feeling, right? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with you. <laughs> and I, 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 I could probably take it one step further. Uh, I remember when React was new back in like 2014, and I saw this, you know, whole different paradigm of understanding like JavaScript could be everything, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was coming from, you know, like, I used to be, uh, I used to core contribute in the WordPress core. And there were, uh, I remember the the time when there were like seven lines of JavaScript in the WordPress core. And now I think there's more JavaScript than PHP. So (laughs) React is inside the core. So like, and in, in what I learned was you actually also learn by looking at the code, mm-hmm. even if you don't understand it. If you like, I, I often tell people, especially beginners, read the source code. Mm-hmm. You may not understand it. Just read the source code. You know, a lot of things uh, I, I just keep reading. And when I start learning them, it feels like, you know, that I, I already know this somehow. And when I'm writing code, I, I, I kind of can figure out, okay, maybe there's this kind of way. Just because I was reading this in a Golang repository somewhere, I think that could also be implemented here, right? So reading mm-hmm. uh, the source code, it's not maths that you cannot understand by just reading and you have to practice. I think we, we put a lot of pressure in, you know, do it by hand and whatnot. Just by reading, you can learn a lot about different styles of programming in different ways of in different, you know, design systems. Yeah. So let's, let's apply that uh, to something a little more um tangible and let's talk about something that we can do 
today, right? So, so you mentioned that um, one of your your first automation experiences was you were looking at a folder full of photos and you wanted to rename them all, and you you thought you could you could work that out. So, what did you have in mind for today? What uh, what did you want to automate? So, uh, a fun bit about me is I generally don't watch news. I was okay. actually the last person to find out that COVID is actually happening. <laughs> the last one, I, I they actually gave you a certificate. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 awesome. Like, I, I, I left my job and I was going to travel more than 40 times in 2020. Oh, wow. Okay. My wife is telling me that this COVID thing is serious. And I'm like, no, it's, it's down there somewhere. It's not here. It's not coming here. It's not global. And then it started happening. And then, you know, I found struggling. It's it's before uh, you know the lockdowns. Before when there were uh, COVID stats application by you know Google, Twitter, Facebook, everybody, right? And I found myself struggling to find out what are the actual stats. Whenever I opened up uh, you know a news channel, they were they were just extra elaborated, right? They would over explain things. They would you know scare you with their you know voice and whatever. So so. And finding those statistics on uh, WHO's website was a big deal. You go to the menu and figure out, like, where's the actual data? <laughs> I know the safety precautions give me the data, right? Mm-hmm. So I ended up writing this small CLI called Corona CLI, mm-hmm. and it went viral. So <laughs> uh, it had, like, uh, I think it has served, like, more than 3 billion API requests by now. Dang. And all... All it does is it, it scraps data from a bunch of different resources and puts uh, these you know s- statistics in your command line where you mm-hmm. generally are when you're writing code, right? So, right, right. And, and then 14 other developers came around on GitHub and then they started collaborating and now it has graphs in command line and whatnot. So, so oh, cool. I think from yeah, like for for me, it's always uh, you know I, I I I love to write code and I love to re- design as well. I'm a front end developer as well, right? But sometimes, some things, it's easier if there's no UI, right? And that is why I built a lot of CLIs. It could be a benign thing, like, for example, when you are at this you know, restaurant and you know that you were here and now you know the Wi-Fi password and your friend is asking for it, mm. I could just write Wi-Fi password in my terminal and it would you know, show me the password of current Wi-Fi I'm connected. So it's, it's the okay. little things like yeah, this, yeah, yeah. right? So, so that is why I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so there's a couple things that, that we could kind of dive into today, right? And, and maybe maybe this is as good a time as any to switch over into pair programming view. So let's mm-hmm. get over here Watcha! to the computer. Um, now we have uh, uh, just actually before we start, let me do a quick shout out. We've had Rachel with us from the start today, giving us all the captioning that we need. So if you are interested in reading along with the discussion today, Rachel from White Coat Captioning is here typing everything out for us right on the homepage. Uh, that's made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, Fauna, Hasura, and Auth0 all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people. So thank you very much for that. And uh, while you're clicking on things on the internet, make sure you head over and uh, follow Ahmed on the Twitter. Uh, and we're going to be working with Node today. So this is just if you if you're new to Node. Uh, this is this is where you would start. There's a, a lot to Node. I think we're probably not going to go too deep into the the basics of Node, but we will um, we will try to walk through the the bits that we're using, right? So um, if I am going to start this, I imagine we're going to live mostly in the terminal today. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new repo. Does that seem like the right first move? Yeah, like uh, it it really depends. Uh, do you want to create something absolutely from scratch or I have a CLI that can create a CLI that can give us a lot. You have uh, a CLI that can create a CLI. Uh, I, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's let's use, let's see. Okay, what's that called? It's called create node CLI. Create node CLI. You can just npx it in the terminal, you know, it will create a folder in there. Okay, so here's here's the uh, the project, and I'm gonna npx create node CLI, and is it gonna? Um, do I need to provide a folder name? No, it will uh, create. Uh, it will ask a bunch of questions, hopefully, okay. <laughs> and it will create that folder, the name of the project, you know, that that you create. Gotcha. 
So this is again me trying to lower the bar of entry for people who want to mm -hmm. automate things. So this is uh, the CLI name is going to be the folder name as well. So it has to be kebab yes, just like it says. Okay. Um, how about how about we build a CLI to uh, you know parse your episodes and schedule from Learn with JSON's API? You know. Okay. In the terminal. All right. So let's call this uh, LWJ CLI. Okay. Um, the CLI command we probably want that to be like LWJ, right? Yep. Okay. Description. Um, get episodes and schedule for learn with Jason. 0 0.0.1 0 .0 sounds about right. Let's go with an MIT license. Uh, okay. Is this the, it, this is like the node package? No, it will. It will oh, it'll probably, ask. Yep. It will probably ask. Yeah, it's just the name. Look at it go. Okay, that was handy. So it's creating the CLI project in the LWGA-CLI folder. Okay, and so we've got a, a nice straightforward, it looks like we've got an index, we've got some utils. Let's open this thing up and peek at it. Uh, we will restart later. Thanks, code. All right. So we've got a CLI in it and a log. So um, this is all the, the details that you were showing me here. So we've got the bin of LWJ. And like if I wanted to change it too, I could also add like learn with JSON index.js, right? And then I'd be able to run any one of these and I'd, I'd get my, my command. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, so this is, this is all set up. It's looking cool. Um, do you want to walk us through what, what's gotten set up here? Yeah, actually, uh, let's go back to packages in first. Uh, okay, here we are. Yeah, so the most important thing, as you just mentioned, are probably pretty much already set up, things that I think should be there. Uh, the most important one is the package name, and that is generally what is going to be installed in your the folder where your you know your executables exist. Uh, so the first thing I would want to do here is just open up the terminal and npm link this. You know, uh, npm link. Just just run it without a command or. Yep, just like that. Okay. All right. So what happened now was uh, our local folder, mm -hmm. this lwg CLI folder, is now acting as a global npm package. And it's installed. So if you run LWG, it should run that CLI. So there oh, we nice. have it. You know, it has a welcome header. It doesn't really do anything. It's the same description and everything. The version that we you know used when we were setting up the CLI. And nice. it's all, all of that is coming from the packages uh, folder, right? Uh, let's, the file. Yeah. Let's uh, let's use the latest version of Node here. I don't know why it's on sixteen. I think I'm going to have to run npm link again. Uh, and that did that did show up in the right place. It did. Okay, so now we're in the, the right version of Node, and we've got ourselves a CLI. Okay, so awesome. this is, uh, I mean, that's cool. It's already doing the thing that we want, or I guess it's doing yep. most of the thing that we want, which is I can type in yep. a command, and we've already got some CLI stuff. So and that you... Go ahead. Yeah, and that is happening. Uh, and that is happening because of the bin command. You know, uh, it all it really does is it symlinks the file that we mentioned. So the index.js file is going to be symlinked in the place where you know uh, where you run your executables in whatever OS you are using, right? Mm -hmm. Only thing that you need to know if you go to index.js file now is that we are creating a Node.js CLI. So the first line has to be the hash bang that emulates Node environment. So mm -hmm. user system resources, bin, environment, Node. So you know we are able to use JavaScript syntax for automation, right? Mm -hmm. So that should be the first line for whatever file you're trying to run through the bin command, right? With that done, everything else is Node.js. There are a couple of things, a couple of ways that I try to do this. There's an init file which take care of you know anything related to checking the node version or stuff like that. So if you go there, 
Uh, I'm using, I, I have created a bunch of packages like CLI welcome, CLI handle errors. And what it does is it uses this data that we felt when we were creating this package, uses versions from the packages and file. And it just creates this awesome welcome header, you know, and it clears the screen. So your CLI gets the room or whatnot. But all of that is configurable. As you can see, the clear variable being passed as default true, which is clearing the screen. If you don't want to clear it, you cannot clear it, right? And it's handling the unhandled errors. So I, I like to handle errors in a better way than the Node.js does. So, so you okay. know, have more information. So like that is what's happening here. Okay. Uh, go back to index.js. And then there's the CLI stuff. Of course, it's a CLI, right? So there's a CLI file that I'm importing. Uh, okay. You can, you know, use basic Node.js without any packages, but it just make things a bit more harder to, you know, use. It, it mm -hmm. increases the amount of syntax you have to write, you know, the boilerplate code or whatnot. So what I generally use here is a CLI framework by Sandra Soros uh, called Meow. And on top of it, I have created a package called CLI Meow Help to generate the help text. Okay. And so here's Meow. It's <laughs> <a> good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Where is my, lost my, my Twitch chat here. Um, so this is the create node CLI. This is Meow. Um, and then it will dig into these other other bits here but so we are um we're setting up some flags and yeah, then so three things are happening here uh we have flags okay which are like options uh for running your cli we have commands which are inputs mm -hmm. uh, for example lwj help right <laughs> it should call you on your whatsapp and you know ask for help so <laughs> so like this is what this page is doing it's creating uh, the inputs, which we call commands and options, mm -hmm. which we call flags uh, for our CLI. And my CLI meow help package is making sure, you know, we can print this uh, help without having to write, you know, adding space and tabs or whatnot. Just add a D-E-S-E, -E, uh, you know, ja uh, property to the flags uh, JavaScript object, right? So here are some basics. Uh, flag setup. So if you want to not clear the screen, you cannot clear it. There's a debugger. Uh, yeah, like, let's, which, you know, like, let's, let's see what happens. So I'm going to change it to not clear the screen. Cause right now, if I try to scroll up, it's, it's gone, which I, yeah. I think is, uh, that's cool. In certain cases, I, I personally like being able to scroll up and look at what happened before. So this is probably more my speed. It won't clear. So we can still scroll up and see what happened before. Um, but I, I do dig that. That's, uh, that's nice. Um, awesome. And, and we then, can remove the no clear option. Let's yeah, let's remove the no clear option. All right. So run that again. And, and like, look how quickly this happens, right? We, we make an edit in here and now it's updating our help for us. And I like this. This is a nice display too. Like I like the, the way that this is all done. This is coming out of meow help. Yeah, this is the package that I created because like my meow is really awesome, but then mm -hmm. you're stuck writing template code uh, in a JavaScript giant JavaScript string. So mm -hmm. what's happening here is it it we, I'm printing a table, you just don't see the borders, so everything is very well formatted right here. Gotcha. And I'm using a couple of other packages to make sure you know things are easier. For example, it shows me the default options, you know, uh, default values for all of the flags. So I don't have to go to GitHub and figure out, you know, what is the default option uh, value here or whatnot. And it's all configurable. It's called CLI Meow Help. It's, you, you can remove whatever from it if you want to. Yeah, so here's, let's see, here's the package uh, for anybody who wants to give that a try. And all of this is, is bundled up as part of this create node CLI. So you can also find all of these right here in the dependency. So I probably won't link to all of them, but uh, remember that they will be there and in the show notes. So make sure you go check those out. Um, and it looks like we got a couple other options here. So I'm gonna run dash V. We can see the version. I'm gonna do LWJ dash D. Debug. All right. Uh, <laughs> we don't have anything here, right? So we're... Uh... Yeah, it's just printing out, you know, the values for your CLI input, you know? The, the defaults, right? 
you have the defaults. So if you like, for example, you were to pass uh, LWG hyphen C is equal to one, like one and, and hyphen D, I think it should make clear true. Is it, oh, do I need to make it? Uh, there it is, there it is. It's not an yep. equals, it's just a yep. space. Okay, cool. So yeah, there we go. We were able to, to kind of check our work and we can see that when we set it to clear true, I can't scroll up anymore. Um, so it, it's kind of, what I like about this, that's kind of an interesting idea is um, if you're like printing out a bunch of, of details and they're not details that anybody needs, but they're like useful while the process is running, you can kind of like scroll, 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 and then just get rid of it all so that, that somebody can see. Um, again, I, you know, as a, a paranoid developer, I always like to have my history. So I'm like, I'm like, no, let me have it. Um, and so without the clear, when we leave it off, we can still scroll up. So I like that. That's a, it's, it's good to have options, right? Um, okay. So looking in here, then we've got our, uh, Let's see, we've got a few things going here. So we've got our, our list of flags, right? So I can set any flag in here if I want to set another flag that is, let's say, um, actually, yeah, we'll just, we'll do a test one. We'll go boop and How about it'll type <laughs> Boolean. We'll go alias B and description. Uh, yeah, print boop. All right, now it's not going to do anything but what'll happen is if I do like an LWJ dash B, um, or I guess I'll need the D. There it is. So now it's it's boop true, right? And it defaults to it doesn't default at all. So let's default to false, right? So if I run LWJ dash D, it's false. But if I run with boop true, it is true. That's cool. I mean, this is great. Like, I, I really like that. And I also realize I'm, I'm showing some shorthand here. So like, we could do it like this. And I would have to add the debug flag. There we go. Yeah. Um, but because we set these aliases, right, that's what's letting us do kind of whatever we want here. Yeah, aliases plus the meow framework. So like, you can capitalize it or you can, you know, add the value. You don't have to, you know, use a bunch of different regex to figure out, you know, what is true or what is not. And it can infer type as well. So mm. for example, if it does not have a default, it can just infer type. So when you didn't have a default, it was true because you were using that uh, flag, right? You, mm -hmm. you were adding hyphen B, right? So that is all, uh, you know, Meow figures that out. And then there are commands. So commands are, you know, just things that you can, you know, build. For example, we can have a command for, uh, let's say episodes or schedule. Oh, copilot, you cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. All right, so now if I do LWJ episodes, it has a description, but it doesn't currently do anything yet. So if I run the help though, it'll show that we've got, we can print our episodes, we can print the schedule. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've we've identified a command, but we're not actually doing anything with the command just yet. Yeah, it's like we now have a serverless function. We need to we need to you know write the code for that function. Right. So and then yeah, then this is the meow help package. You give it a name, give it your flags and commands. It mm -hmm. generates the help text, and you give that help text as options to meow framework. And I also have a couple of defaults like infer type is true. I don't like hard rejections because I handle the, you know, errors on my own with the CLI handled unhandled package, but okay. you can, you know, set it to true, like a bunch of things. And now this entire file is actually returning back all the CLI mess to us, you know, the flags and commands. So like once you run create node CLI, you put in the flags and then you can just quickly go back to index.js and start writing code. So gotcha. what's happening inside the code is, uh, you know, I'm taking the CLI out of that file, uh, importing it out, right? And in the index.js file, as you can see. In the index.js, yep. Yeah, as you can see, I have created a CLI.input, which is a commands, right? And CLI.flags, 
which are the options that we can use, right? Okay. And from flags, I'm taking out all the flags that I care about, clear debug. You can, you know, take out uh, boop <laughs> that you had, right? Yeah, uh, let's, okay, so let's play with a, a flag first because that's probably the easiest thing to, to show, right? So if yeah. I'm down here and I want to, um, like, show a, show a boop, if the boop flag is set, and then I would, it would be like input includes boop. And then I can do nope. stuff, right? No, 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 no. We already have boop, so you can just say oh. boop and then, yeah. Okay, boop and and. And then if I want, so I'm assuming dot show boop doesn't actually exist. So if no, I want to, yeah. what's the, it, What's the right way to do this? Is there like a helper for showing text or do I just like put some text, like return some text? You, you can console log anything here. So <laughs> let's do that. Okay, so now if I run LWJ, boop. <laughs> yeah. All right, I love it. Um, no, this is, I mean, this, awesome. is, this is great. Like this is fun, right? We're, and, and you can kind of see like, this this doesn't feel too unfamiliar if you've written JavaScript before. Like we we're getting some some variables, and so this is effectively calling a function, right? We're we're saying like call the LWJ function, and then once this gets called, we can say I want the inputs and flags, which are like our our the props passed to the the arguments passed to the function, and then we can just do whatever we want in here, and and starts to feel like okay this isn't this isn't so bad we can make this work um great so what's my uh you were talking about showing episodes and schedule which is is going to be a little bit more involved than than console logging something so what's our what's our next step if we want to do that yeah like for example for inputs it's generally i generally try to you know keep the commands to the minimum and I generally use more flags because okay. uh, the concept of uh, alias exists for flags, not for inputs, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also it's it's a bit hard to figure out what, you know, you, you, a user can type any kind of input. It's, it's not uh, some sort of data that I have. So for example, if you type in help, what I'm trying to check with JavaScript is, does your user input includes help? If mm -hmm. it does, then uh, meow provides a dot show help function, you know, so CLI does show help and quit. That zero is there for quitting without an error, right? Oh, gotcha. So that is that. Yeah, that is that. Uh, and then, uh, how about we change the episodes thing to a flag? It's 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 more controllable that way. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to take these right out of here, put them in here instead, and we will uh, clean these up a bit. Type. So let's do a type, and this will be a string. Right? No, it will it will be a boolean. We just want. We're to gonna do it as a boolean. Is, yeah, if someone has that flag, we will show them episode trait. Right? Got it. And this one, uh, we can do an episode. Uh, let, let's go without an alias on this one. It's you want to be, you want to be clear about what you're asking for, right? And then we can do the same thing for the schedule. We'll set a type of boolean um, and a default of false. And I think. I think that's uh you know that, that puts us in pretty good shape and then we're back to having the help text so if i run help we can see we've got flags for episodes now episodes awesome. and schedule now we need to take them out in the index.js you know that uh the structure thing from flag episodes schedule okay awesome so now if someone is asking for episodes, what I would do is like, for example, I would check uh, if someone is asking for an episode and I would try to, you know, uh, print out the episodes, right? So episodes in and something. All right. And then in here, um, yeah, we're going to have to do some work. So the work that we want to do what I generally do is I, I don't destructure it. I just now remember it. So, so I could do flags.episodes and then await episodes. So episodes could be on different file. And oh, I get you. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So let's let's not do that instead. So we'll do it like this, and we'll say flags dot episodes, and then you want to await episodes. Episodes, and we want episodes to be its own file. So we're going to put that in utils. So since we are awaiting with an end, I think you need to put uh, medium brackets with await. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now let's create uh, an episodes file in our utils folder. Episodes.js. Okay. And now this one's being included by our CLI. So we don't need the hash bank for this, right? Yeah. Okay. So this one we can just kind of do whatever we want. So if we if we wanted to uh, create, we'll create a probably an async function episodes. And that will, for now, I guess we could just return, right, just to make sure this thing's working. And then, um, what's you the You have to module, just before async, uh, write module.exports is equal to, so that should work. OK. Yep. What doesn't it like here? Oh. There we go. All right, so we've got a module.exports is equal to functions, and that means that up here we should be able to uh, just const episodes equals require utils episode. All right, and so that's this it, should just work. right? This should just work. We just run lwj episodes. Oh no, what have I done? It, you're not console logging, instead you're returning, so you should console log. Oh. To do. Yep. Try that again. Hey! All right, so now we've got, uh, we've got ourselves at least the basics of this thing, and so I want to fetch, um, my default here would be to reach for node fetch, is that, uh, is that where you would go as well, or is there a utility that I'm not aware of? Yeah, I generally use Exios, so you can use whatever you are good with. So. Okay, so I'm just going to npm install. Um, I've had so much trouble remembering how Axios works, and now I've I've memorized <laughs> Node Fetch, so I'm just going to use Node Fetch. Uh, so let's get let's get Node Fetch in here, and then um, I have an API for Learn with Jason, so we can go to Learn with Jason dev slash API slash episodes. And that'll give us a list of the um, of the upcoming episodes. So let's get those episodes equals await, and we're gonna get fetch for that. Um, and we can check, if, or I guess we'll check this as like the response. And if response okay, then I want to throw an error. And otherwise, we'll get our episodes will be await response JSON. OK. And then I I could just throw out that giant object of JSON, but that feels like maybe not the best thing to do. Um, maybe we can just You should do it. You think so? OK. I'm going to do it. Oh, no. I think you should take out title description. <laughs> OK. So let's, let's get. Uh, Let's get like a episodes subset and well, that'll be episodes uh, dot map and we'll get the episode and we'll just return. Um, yeah, we'll do an ID a title and what else do I have? Description. Oh, I don't even have an ID. I have that ID. So we'll do a, a title description. That should be good. And then we'll probably want some way to actually like do something with that, but not just yet, right? So then we can do the episode subset. And should I limit this to like the first? This is going to be like 200 plus episodes. So maybe we just get the. Uh, so so instead of just you know console logging it, how about you run another map and print 
it out uh, with console logs in it, you know, print out everything with spaces and stuff like that. Oh, I got you. I see what you're saying. Let's do console.log um, and we can say, let's get the title and description out. I guess for now we can just title, then description, just... then add uh, an empty console log. It would just add another line. Okay. Skip that part, save that. And then I won't need to save that anymore. So we can just run it like this. Let's, uh, let's see what happens, everyone. Hey, look at it go. All right. So this is fun. We got, uh, you know, we've got like title here. We've got our descriptions. Um, it's out of order. I'm noticing, which is interesting. <laughs> Why is it out of order? That should definitely be ordered. Weird. I wonder if I did something goofy. I must have done something goofy with it that's uh, that's doing the order weird. But that's okay. We'll fix that some other time because that's in my API, not in the CLI. Um, uh, but so now well, let's add links to it so it's like more useful. Mm -hmm. You know, you can press command and click a link in the yes. demo. Okay, so let's get the link, and the link is going to be a little bit weird because I have to pull it out. So we'll go learn with, actually, I can do this short, uh, ldbj.dev slash episode slug current. Yep. And that should work. Let's run it again, and let's check that this actually does what we want. You no, I screwed it up. You log it. Oh, you right. Console log it. Right, right, that whole thing. Um, okay. Yeah, console log is the you know first class setters and when writing CLI. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I screwed it up. What did I screw up? Um, wait, link. Oh, ah. the second map destructure. There we go. Okay, so let's give this a shot. Um, this opened in the wrong window. Let's open it in this one. Ah, it's still opening in the wrong window. Whatever. It's it's working. It's doing what we want. We're <laughs> we're getting it over here. And if I if I copy paste this out, we can uh, we can see that it's taking us to the right place. Okay, perfect. So that's exciting. Like this is this is fun. We can do uh, we can do quite a bit with this. And I mean that took relatively little effort, right? Like this is uh, this is pretty exciting. Um, but like what I want to do next is like what I call CLI user experience. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is where the design comes in. You yeah. Know? Uh, let, let's use like for example, I don't like. Uh, you probably have a really good internet, but sure. not everyone would have. So your CLI is going to be stuck doing nothing when the API is being called. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to inform the user that something is happening there. Okay. And then everything is a giant big mess of a text here. Right. There's so a ton would, in here. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to you know. Mm, add some sort of flair to it, right? Like, for example, if you try, right, uh, let, let's go ahead and try the chalk package first. Okay. So install chalk. Um, so I have, it looks like it was already installed, I think. So we have access to chalk. So in episodes, I'm going to get chalk equals require chalk. And I think you should not require const chalk. Like, like, let's just destructure right here. Okay. I know from the back of my hand what we need. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, uh, let's take out dim. So for description would be dimmed out. Dim. Got it. Yeah. And then italic. Description would be italic in you know contrast with the title. Okay. Then bold. I think we need to have a bolder title, so like bold. And then uh, I think Leonard Jason is yellow, so yellow. Okay. Awesome. So now what we need to do is we need to start using these. These are just functions. Okay. Whatever we pass them, uh, we can pass them inside the console log that you're printing at the end. So just pass bold for title. 
You're doing it like this, right? Yes. Okay. And description would be dim and italic. Okay. Can you actually move the link below the title? Like that? And yeah, and add like an extra console log and empty one. You don't need to pass an empty string at all. Like just oh, empty. you can just leave but, it empty like that. I thought it would yeah. just no op if you did that. Yep. So uh, two it then. I think that would look better. Here. Yep. Okay. Yeah, or we could pass you know the slash n character if we want to. I think that should look good now. Hey, that's looking pretty good. All right. So that's exciting that it that it does it. Uh, I mean, and and you know, chalk like chalk for folks who aren't familiar is it, that's its whole purpose is to make the CLI output look less like jumbly, right? Because if if you just use console log, everything is formatted exactly the same. It's hard to get any sense of visual hierarchy. So with this, by by doing bold and yellow and and like dimming the description, we have made it much easier to pick out the most important information as you scroll. Um, we can see what the the title and the link is for each one of these, and then there's more information below that's that's less visually attention demanding. Um, so that I, yeah, I like this. This is uh, this is already looking pretty slick. Awesome, and I I think like uh, we can also be more accessible. You you know see the experience with something like chalk like it has function like inverse. So for you know high contrast, uh, if you prefer high contrast, you can you know create a flag. So anyone could use that flag for high contrast, and it will just inverse everything, and that mm. would be more readable for some people, right? So okay. like you can you can play around with that, right? And then I often provide a minimal uh, layout for my CLI. So if you provide X, which gen that generally means give me the UI without any formatting or whatnot. So I, I can easily remove that and I can console log information there or whatnot. Right? I got you, you. You could easily play around with that, right? Yeah. But okay. uh, yeah, let, let's move uh, to something more interesting. Uh, let's add spinners, CLS spinners. I see that in the chat, right? Everybody loves a spinner. <laughs> let's do uh, it. So there's a, yeah, like let, there's a package from Sindresaurus called Aura, O-R-A. Let's install that. This one, elegant yeah. terminal spinner. Let's all right. Let's do it. So I'm going to npm install Aura. All right, I have I have installed Aura. Required in this file. Okay. So let's create a constant called spinner. Uh, like all the way right at the top this. here. Yeah. No. Yeah. Anywhere that works. Okay. Uh, spinner is equal to Aura, and it it takes in the uh, uh, a JavaScript project. What I generally do is I create an empty spinner, so Aura uh, function and empty. It's in in the JavaScript object you can say text, and don't provide it any text. Copilot does not like that. It wants it wants us to be descriptive. <laughs> yeah. So like. It now already Copilot is already doing its job really well. I know, right? But, yeah, spinner or start is what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, and so and so what we're doing here, and the reason that we're starting it before the fetch is because it's going to wait for this, right? So we we need to start the spinner before we start this fetch, or else this won't even try to start until this is already done loading. So this is going to give us an actual indication that something is happening. And then yeah. once we get here, right, is when we would stop it? No. How about you provide the text inside the start function? Like it's fetching episodes, just a string. OK. And after that, we can do a bunch of stuff. You can just spin a dot stop it when we want to, like after the wait. OK, so we'll spin a dot stop down here. And that way we are spinning until we get our episodes back and then we start printing everything out. Yeah, and if it fails, we can do, you, you know, use spinner or fail. It has a bunch of options that you can read in the documentation. 
Okay, I want to make this slower. So let's have it, uh, let's await, um, how can I, what, what do I want to do here? I want to do a sleep function. Is sleep, yeah, there's no like built in sleep though. We have to like fake it with promises, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're gonna promise. All right, new, hold on, can I do this? New promise. And then we're gonna get a resolve object. And we're going to set timeout. Oh, no, let's do it down here. Set timeout, resolve true. And we'll do it in like two seconds. And that's a fake sleep, I think. Let's see if I got that on the first try. Look at it go! Yes! Oh, I love it when I'm good at code. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's super exciting. And then down here, if something goes wrong, we could like spinner.error, you said, or spinner.fail? I think it's fail or failed. Okay. So let's um let's force it to fail. And false. And I think you can provide an error message in there. Is is this here like that, or do I need to pass it as a or no, I need to make this true, don't I? So that it always passes. So I think this this should cause the spinner to fail. Nope, it just worked. Oh wait, I need to like return so it doesn't continue trying to do things. What are you doing? You will have to actually exit the CLI. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. So I, it was, it wasn't, um, this was like, if it, uh, if, if both things, yeah, that was just me not remembering how code works. So what I needed to do instead of an and was an or. If I or this, it'll fail. You hackers, you, you dirty hackers. Nope. Nope. Turns out I don't know how code works. Uh, <laughs> like, what are you trying to do? I was trying to force a failure, and I and I just yeah. realized I just do it like this. That'll do it. You, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that with the process uh, variable in, you know, Node.js, because your CLI is going to keep running. The process is still running. Mm -hmm. Actually, try to avoid that, you know, that kind of failure, because the CLI should fail, right? But you can force it with, I think, process dot on exit or something like that. It, this I generally consult the documentation. I don't remember as, from the back of my head, but you can force the process to exit. Gotcha. And so we, we don't want to return then, we would just process.exit? Uh, something like that. And then I, would I like exit code? Exit or exit code, do you think? No, just exit. You, you, you will have to, you know, uh, import that process as well. So in you can ha you have the option of I think process dot exit code with it. So you can you know type in the exit code as zero or one. So process dot exit one would okay. be a failure. And now this should trigger that unhandled package, right? When I do this. No. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. Okay. And and it looks like it just did the the regular old failure, exits, and it doesn't explode but it also doesn't send anything other than the fail to fetch episodes, which that seems okay, right? Did you import process? You Oh, I didn't realize you had to import. Isn't that a node global? Uh, I think it's a global, but I... Is that even... A, I've, is that right? That feels like that's going to explode. Yeah, I, I thought I could have <laughs> sworn process was... Yeah, process is a global though. Yeah. Um, so it's it's exiting. It's exiting with a code one, which should be an error. Um, why is that happening? That's we don't want a breakpoint. Don't don't touch my stuff. Um, also weird that it's timing out like that. Because it shouldn't get down to here. Right? But now it should skip this all together because it actually works. 
we get the response that we wanted. Um, it still didn't wait for this though, which is interesting. Something weird happening. What am I doing? Okay, somebody smarter than me. Ahmed, I'm, I'm <laughs> relying on you. What have I done? It's not using that promise, right? It's skipping this promise. And it feels like it didn't do that until we got to here. What? Resolve true. No. Oh! Oh, it's not a function. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Andres, for calling that out. That was a good, uh, that was a good, good catch. Never would have caught that. Would have just sat there like a doofus looking at it. Um, no, this is great. This is, so this is great. So then we've got our process exit in here, and that does what we want. Ah, everybody's happy. Okay, if I make it fail. It just fails. Okay, so we're happy here. This is good. This is uh, this is exactly what we want. We've got ourselves a nice process where it's going to show us a spinner, fetch the episodes, display those, give us the uh, the ability to um, quickly go and check those out. Uh, yeah, this is I like this. I'm happy. Can we do pagination? Uh, we actually can do pagination because I think my I think that's why I thought my API was out of date. Is it actually does pages? So if we go to page two. That's, yep, that's the rest. And then we can go to page three. I don't know how many pages I have now because I think it's like 50 per page. So we should get one more. And then I think six will be empty. There it is. Okay, so we've got five pages of API results. We could we could theoretically get, uh, get five pages worth of these. Um, but I think you had, I, I don't want to get too far off of, I think you had some things you wanted to show. Yeah, I think that that's pretty much about it. Like, if you were to you know pigeon it at its its basic JavaScript, it's, it has nothing to do with automation, right? Mm -hmm. So that is you know that is the, the power of Node.js. Like, you're not worried about the syntax of Bash or whatnot, right? You're generally writing what you already write as mm -hmm. a developer, right? You're generally playing around with the same web tech, right? Yeah. There are a bunch of gotchas that are kind of covered with packages like Meow and Create Node CLI. So like, you don't have to worry about it. So whenever I have to do something, I just create Node CLI it and I'm right there with a function that I had in my mind and I'm writing code, right? And mm -hmm. that's JavaScript code. So making it super easy. Yeah, to do that, like, 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 I have processes after this to like. It takes me generally less than ten minutes uh, to create a small CLI and publish it and document it on uh, GitHub and npm because I have CLIs for all of that, right? Yeah. Just, uh, like, for example, if you were to uninstall the CLI that you have, uh, npm uninstall global lwj. Is it un unlink? Unlink is, unlink is generally very weird. You, you just should so uninstall just, it. Okay. Yeah, let's see if it works. So there's okay. no LWG now. Uh, in, now if you run NPX LWG. This is installing an NPM package that I created before this episode. Like, oh. Half an hour before it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your face. I was like, "What? What happened?" Um, okay. All right. This is cool. So, so we were able and to now get everyone can try it. That's really cool. Okay. So everybody can. Yeah, you can run this right now with npx uh, lwj dash dash episodes, um, and or then schedule. Schedule. Dang, we have 16 episodes coming up in the future. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, we have we have so, and actually that's not even all of them because I've got like eight in my inbox that I have to get listed on the site. So we're, we're just, uh, we just got a whole bunch of fun stuff coming on. Oh man, Marie Pool. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. We're, we're doing uh, like a Notion one. Yeah, so many good things oh, happening. Good. This is going to be so good. I, I, sometimes I forget to like look at my, my upcoming schedule. 
and then I get to look at it and I've forgotten all of the great things that we've we've put in place and I get very excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look how great this is. Like this is this is fun, right? Like I love I love that you can do this sort of thing where, you know, you you have the ability to just kind of throw in some some basic stuff. You can you can get a CLI set up and running. You can get the the formatting working and the fact that you know you've kind of packaged all that up in create node cli is is really handy that's really nice where where we're able to to very quickly get a sense of of what's going on here right like i i like this a lot and like if you go to uh lwg hyphen cli on my github uh github so github.com slash mls slash lwg hyphen cli So what you see here is the same CLI. So what I'm trying to say is like, I have a bunch of automation uh, going on around here. Mm -hmm. One thing I have, it actually reads, uh, writes a readme for me. So it's, it's pretty much the same code. Uh, oh, wow. So you got a whole so, whole thing. Yeah, I, I think I it, it took me less than 10 minutes to create this thing. <laughs> and I have CLIs that are creating this uh, from the source code. The change log is completely automated. Uh, you know, it is based on top of an emoji log uh, git commit spec that I created for me because I love emojis, right? Yeah. Uh, like if you click on the change log. Uh, change log. Yeah, there's a heading down there. Here, read the change log. Yeah. So this gets generated automatically uh, in the bottom, you know, uh, what happened in the release, uh, what were the commits or whatnot. It's based on top of the git commit messages and everything. It, this is um, like semantic versioning or conventional yeah. commits? Yeah, uh, it's just semantic versioning. Okay. And okay. On, on top of, you know, emoji log spec mess, you know, the git commit spec that mm -hmm. I created. And it, it's just using the git log and putting it out in emoji log in a way that it's more easily readable. And yeah. I don't have to spend time on it. It's like the same thing, you know, the way my instructor, my, you know, exercise instructor used to tell me that, Yamad, you'd only have to drive your car to the, you know, racing track. The rest will take care of itself, right? So for <laughs> me creating, you know, for me creating packages and sharing them on GitHub or NPM is I only wrote the code that I wanted to write, not a bunch of integration because I've, spend time once to automate all of that right so i think more people should you know invest time in creating automation like this you know you already know javascript right yeah Make more use of it yeah this is, i mean this is great like i i think this is it's super fun um you know we've got a lot of a lot of potential for for this sort of thing where we can you know you can go and take quite a bit out of of just your day-to-day -day work, turn it into a CLI and make it easy to, to quickly get a sense of, of what's going on, you know, in your, like if, it, you know, if I'm a, as a dev, I'm trying to think of things that I, that I look at all the time that I have to open up something for. Right. So, and, you know, I think there's um, like the GitHub CLI is a good example where I, I started using the GitHub CLI and a whole bunch of stuff just got easier for me. Um, and the, like the Netlify CLI is another one that I use all the time where just like so much stuff that I would otherwise have to go and check in, check out is just kind of like here for me so that I can go and check things out and see what's going on. And if I'm in a site that's actually running, I can see details about that site. Um, so building these CLIs is, is a huge win for the, the people who have to work with this stuff every day because you, you bring the data to where they are instead of making them go to a UI that they would otherwise never need to open. Um, yeah, I really, I really like this. Uh, and, and it's like, you know, this is like, this is how you feel super powerful, right? It's like your serverless workers <laughs> sort of like, you know, without hosting or whatever, like it's, it's a career improving skill set, right? Mm -hmm. When I started automating things at work, it changed the way uh, people felt about me. You know, I, I was able to, you know, write the career letter much, much faster, right? Yeah. So for example, like like in 2020, when my travel plans got blocked, <laughs> that is what I did. Like I started creating a course on creating Node CLIs, right? Mm -hmm. And I ended up recording like, I think 30 hours of content. And then I ended up deleting two thirds of it. It still has like 23 projects 
all kind of fun stuff like developer service in command line you know mm. uh, the cli i created uh, the create node cli created that as a project in that course to teach like it's what is what does it feel like to create an actual production level project not you know a bunch of console logs and whatnot it can remember things for example if you run create node cli now it will remember what is your author name what is the url you won't have to put it again right so it can do things like that so it's 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 created like that and mm-hmm. there are so many awesome npm packages out there like you know type in corona uh you get covid status you type you type in you know uh, right weather here you get all kind of weather updates and like i i, I lead developer relations right now uh at Deputy API and i have devrel cli you know <laughs> it, it just reports oh, well, back yeah. to me what i need to know from notion from uh you know a google sheet and whatnot all of that and i have a cli called dashboard so yeah. whenever i wake up i just write dash in my command line and it takes and care of it tells me what i need to know stats what i need to know or how my courses are performing how my products are performing so like it's it's super handy right yeah for and then sure. i have a and then i have a cli that opens things for me right like for example if I, i'm working on a particular project name xyz i would say open xyz and it will open up all the browser bars and you know open up vs code set it the way i want mm-hmm. on my multiple screen setup and then i'm right there coding instead of worrying about oh now now i need to open that now i need to open that so it, it just makes me super productive you know yeah and yeah i can just say exit xyz and it we are back to watching netflix yeah that's really nice so i have i have a question i think whenever we start talking about automation there's the the trade-off between how much work you actually will save versus how much work it takes to create the automation and and i think that uh you know xkcd has a a good like visual joke, uh, a good visual gag on this, where you think that you're going to write a little bit of code to automate and then this thing goes away. And then, you know, the, the automation ends up taking way more time than just doing the thing would. Um, and, and so I think that there's, as with everything, this is one of those, it depends scenarios where there, there are cases where it's a great idea. There are cases where it's a terrible idea to try to automate something. How do you draw that line? Like what's your heuristic for the way that you, approach this when when do you decide to automate versus when do you keep doing it the you know without automation so whenever i try to automate things in my brain it's generally it defaults to true right so so i'm a very bad <laughs> example of this right? <laughs> like like i have a real example to uh you know like here for the sound like for example people watching this live stream you see how good jason is looking as compared to me so i have a really good dslr that i bought and it's just sitting there i bought a linda subscription and i saw a course then i saw that i that linda subscription subscription kept uh you know updating and then it was expiring one day and then i thought maybe i should just download this 10 hour long course on how to do the video right on internet right uh, and put it on my server. Then I started creating a Dropbox CLI. Then I started creating a CLI to download things. Then I found YouTube deal. So <laughs> I downloaded a bunch of courses. They are sitting in my Dropbox, but mm. my DSLR is also still sitting in the back box and it's been years. So <laughs> I'm a bad example. Here. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm picturing this as the flow chart that happens in your brain. Um, so <laughs> yeah. um, but no, yeah. I think, I think that there is a, uh, you know, there's, there's a good argument to be made for so I'll, I'll i'll share some examples on my side right because i there are things that i do all the time and it made sense for me to automate them so uh, a good example every time that i book an episode of my show i need to add someone to a calendar invite like i need to invite the the captioners to come in i have to send it off to my virtual assistant aiden who's who's helping me with keeping the site up and running um i have to block out time on my calendar. There's a whole bunch of things that have to happen. When I was doing that manually, it didn't happen about 25% of the time, which is a really bad way to run a show. So by automating, I increase the consistency. I save myself a bunch of time, um, but it's predictable and it's ongoing. It's a thing that I know is going to happen with other things, like with experimental things. I find that if I, if I'm going to do something and I think it's going to work, but I haven't really established the pattern, I'll start automating it and then I'll learn something new and I'll change it. Now I have to go change my automation and then I'll spend a bunch of time fixing it and then I'll go back to doing it and I'll learn something else and I'll go and change it. So for me, the heuristic is 
is this something that I've been doing manually for a long time that has not changed? If, if I've found that for the last three months, I've been doing this task over and over again, and it hasn't evolved and there's no real like horizon for when it would evolve, I will then decide that this is a good target for automation. That's, that's usually how I, I think about these problems. Um, cause otherwise I like the only thing I hate more than doing manual work is doing uh, painful maintenance work. And if I feel like my maintenance work is becoming busy work because I over automated and now I have to go fix 15 processes every time I change my mind, I'd rather just do that work manually for a bit until I've come, come to a conclusion on the way that something should work. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I have two examples here that people would find useful because I like first part is realizing that you are what kind of person you are. I am, I over engineer things. I know this because I come from an, extremely technical engineering background, right? So uh, uh, this default, yes, I know I'm an o going to over-engineer things. So so what I do is I start with a spreadsheet. Mm. And spreadsheet is very, very hard to over-engineer. It only has rows and it only has columns. You can, mm -hmm. can over-engineer a notion. You cannot do that in spreadsheets, mm -hmm. right? So you, at, at, it, it takes a lot to put in and create a workflow out of it. And when you are ready to move off of a spreadsheet mentally for something, then you know what kind of workflow you have in a spreadsheet and how it's going to help you to automate that, right? Mm -hmm. And and then you should automate, but you should not automate everything, right? For example, right. I, I have this one thing called a refund CLI. So when someone asks me for a refund, that by the way, that never happens. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> but but if someone asks me for a refund, mm. uh, I have automated a bunch of stuff, but I have left a bunch of stuff not automated intentionally, so I can reach out and I can take time to consider what happened and sure. why it happened. Right? And many times it's the human interaction that you know <laughs> you end up relying on. So like, don't always automate things, but mm -hmm. I, I I I bet there's a lot that you can automate and feel really good about. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, great. I think, um, I mean, we've, we've, I, I, I'm honestly, I'm so blown away by how quickly we're able to do this, how, how far we got and how, how much we were able to accomplish. Um, so w what if somebody wants to go further with this? Like where, where should someone go if they want to learn more? Like what's, what's their next step? I, I think I saw that you have a course on this. Hey, thank yeah. you for the sub and different ghost. So a shameless plug here is I have a course called nodecli.com. And is that <laughs> this, I think I saw it down here somewhere. Uh, this one? No, no, below, down below. Here. Yeah. So f fun thing about this course is that there are like 100 videos in it, 22 projects, created a bunch of CLIs here, but the first like 12 videos, first hour of the course, where I explain weird stuff that Node.js has and create my first CLI is completely free, right? So I created this course because people would go on and create more CLIs that I could use. I love using CLIs, right? Mm -hmm. And a bunch of my students have created awesome CLIs that are actually helping me. So it's I'm, I'm being selfish as well. Uh, so if, if, if you want to learn from me, uh, this is like I spent a lot of time uh, putting out this course and created uh, videos on how you can create production level CLI, how can you can create a, a CLI that can, you know, run a survey or do a quiz, your Wi-Fi password or pre-configurable CLIs, or maybe you're doing some DevOps work, you want progress estimation, right? Mm. Uh, and how to send, you know, how to debug CLIs because it's 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 a bunch of console logs and it's a bit weird, right? Uh, so you can do that, but uh, if, well, uh, and, all of the exercises, all of the projects are completely open source on my GitHub. So uh, if you don't want to pay, go ahead, still do learn it, right? It's it's completely, all of it is out there. Uh, it's called Node C, uh, CLI tips and tricks right there on my GitHub repository. Uh, it's like everything that you learn here or will learn uh, in my course is open source. A lot of packages that I use and find interesting, I just open source them in a way that they are more useful. Just like, mm. you see, we didn't create a welcome package, but every time you run that CLI, it welcomes you with, okay, this is the CLI that you're running. This is the version of it or whatnot. Like, you can do a lot with that, right? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's very cool. Like how how you know again, like this is uh. It seems like there's a lot of potential here, a lot of potential for for making our lives easier, for making our lives easy at work, for helping our coworkers use things that uh, that we want them to use, for taking boilerplate out of the equation. If it's got to be the same every time, yeah, that's a great candidate for for automation. Um, well, cool. So I think you know from here, and, maybe maybe what we want to do. Oh, go ahead. And like, there's not a lot. Like for example, uh, before creating this course. I surveyed a lot of developers in on Twitter as well. Automation is actually a bigger use case for Node.js uh, with developers than creating APIs. And th those are two major use cases, right? Mm. So, so and as you saw today, like uh, it's all JavaScript, right? Uh, and if you don't want to, uh, you know, mess around with Node.js a lot, like you can use tools like Meow, create Node CLI, stuff like that. But it's all it's always fun to, you know, explore. Node.js documentation is really, really good. We have a project called Node.js.dev, a learn project where you can learn Node.js in a lesser, you know, uh, it, it's not API reference stuff. It's, it's just a bunch of tutorials that people wrote. If you click on learn, you can see that. Yeah, you can you can learn Node.js from here if you want to. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's coming from a couple of uh, community authors. Oh wow, so there's like, so much in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not documentation. It's like it's tutorials, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm a big fan of uh, reading and going deep once you have a problem. Otherwise, you end up learning 26 languages and you don't know uh, what to do with them. Right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right. Well, Ahmed, I, this is this is super fun. I think we've got uh, we've got next steps. We got an API or a CLI built and you got one published already, which is amazing. Uh, so, so everybody, make sure you go and check this out. Have a have a good time there. There's there's a lot of a lot of really interesting stuff going on here. And make sure you go and follow Ahmed on uh, on Twitter as well. Um, as always, this episode has been live captioned by Rachel. Uh, she's here from Whiteco Captioning, and thank you very much for that. That's due to the support of our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Hasura. Auth0, I'll chip in to make that white code captioning affordable for me um, so we can make the show more accessible to more people. While you're checking out things on the homepage of the site, you can click through to that schedule or you can run the CLI command, npx lwj dash dash schedule. Now you can go and check it out. We've got so much fun stuff coming up. It's going to be an absolute blast. I, uh, I cannot wait to show all of these things to y'all. Uh, make sure you add this to your calendar. You can click on the add on Google calendar button. And, uh, and you know, just one more fun thing is don't forget, we've got these rainbow Corgi rubber ducks. You too can have one of these adorable little buddies for you or your kids. It'll listen to your code problems. It'll hang out with you in the bath. It'll be a dog chew toy. It can be whatever you want. You, you take this thing and have a blast with it. Uh, just please, Get them out of my storage. <laughs> I had to buy so many. Um, no, go 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 grab one of those. Uh, Ahmed, any any parting words before we call this one done? Yeah, like if you build a CLI, tweet at me. <laughs> I love using CLIs, right? Yes, uh, absolutely. I'm, uh, MR OS at Twitter. So like, let's do this. All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging out today. Chat, hang out. We're going to go find somebody to raid. Ahmed, I appreciate your time, and we will see y'all next time. Bye.